So what kind of lazy are you? Are you cruiser board lazy or are you freestyle board lazy? I'm both cruiser board and freestyle board lazy. So today I'm gonna be skating both of these, having a good old time. You know what? I could just get used to a regular 8.5 inch board and just skate that for everything, but no, no. I'm gonna take the easy way out for the flip tricks and the fun way out for the ramps. So there's the big board. If I wanna just cruise around, I don't care about flipping the board around. I wanna be like, you know what? I'm not even gonna flip my board once. I might not even ollie. There's this board. And then, so let's say I'm in the opposite mood. We've got the little tiny board. This board is also great for when you're lazy, but you do wanna flip the board and that's all you wanna do. You're like, you know what? I don't even wanna cruise around. I don't even wanna skate a ramp. I just wanna flip a board around in a parking lot. So there's two different kinds of lazy when it comes to skateboarders. So with the big board, it's got a long wheelbase, so you feel secure, safe, well balanced. It's got a lot of surface area so you can land on it easy. You just feel secure on this board, you feel safe. It feels good for cruising around, you're not gonna slip out. Long boards are good to learn to just cruise around on, big, long, wide boards, so it's good for that. Bigger wheels would definitely be something that would actually help a lot too. And softer wheels, these little tiny hard wheels, not too safe. So it's the opposite with the smaller board. So with this board, we're thinking about getting that tail to the ground quicker. So even smaller wheels might be better on this, a really flat board. Quick pop. So this is good for like pressure flips if I want to just really pop it really quick. It's low to the ground. So this one, the reason it's a little bit harder to pop is because the wheelbase is longer and it's heavier, so it's just it just feels like a soggier pop. And it actually takes some effort to do kick flips. It takes a lot of effort to do a 360 flip on this board. So most of the clips from this freestyle board are from when I went on a vacation and I just took the freestyle board as my primary skateboard on that trip. So I'm one of those guys that likes to think outside of the box and try different things. So for a while, yeah, my main board was a big 10.75 anti-hero Jeff Grosso board. And I used that for games of skate, I used it for flat ground, street, skate park skating, everything. And then I went through a phase where I was like, no, I want the opposite. I want the smallest board possible and I was skating street with a freestyle board. So I like variety, because when you switch your board up a lot, you learn new tricks. So there are some things that I learned on the freestyle board that I would have never learned on the old school 10.75 inch board, and there are things that I learned on the old school board that I would never have learned on the freestyle board. So right now, I've been enjoying the popsicle boards. You know, it's summer, I wanna feel light, I wanna feel enlightened. When the board has a sense of lightness, sometimes it makes me feel a little lighter because I've been 230, 235 pounds uh, this winter and this spring, so I'm now I'm losing weight because it's getting warmer, I'm sweating, so I want my board to feel lighter. I don't know, maybe I just like flipping the board more when it's warmer outside. Maybe through the winter I don't mind like wrapping up and skating a bigger board, maybe on ramps and stuff. So I've seen old guys out at the skate park on boards that are huge and they're trying to do flip tricks and they just don't have the power and the force to flip it. And I think sometimes they would do so well on like a freestyle board. Or I'll see somebody at the skate park skating a little popsicle board and they're skating transition mostly. It's like a 7.5, 7.75. And I think, oh man, they would be doing so much better if they had like a bigger board with bigger wheels that could lock in so they could cross lock their 50-50s and the ramp. So I think a lot of times your setup depends on what kind of skating you do, but also the kind of skating you do depends on your setup. So how much you progress on a certain thing depends on your skill, but it also depends on your setup. A setup can help and a setup can hurt your progression. So I know certain people that never really learned kickflip because they always rode a big old 
school board and maybe Chuck Taylor's. I've known people that never really got into ramp skating because they always skated a 7.5. So different boards are better for different things. It's kind of like a quiver. Maybe you need a couple boards if you're gonna skate different styles of skateboarding. So a small board can flip easier, but it might be harder to land on. A big board with a long wheelbase can be a comfort, but it takes a lot of force to flip it. So yeah, maybe we have found the best shape of skateboard and maybe it is the popsicle shape. Maybe that's the best for flip tricks and stuff like that. But there are certain things that a freestyle board excels in. There are certain things that an old school board excels in. What are you guys riding? Let me know in the comments section below. What wheels are you riding? What deck? What trucks? What do you guys like? What do you guys want to see videos on? What should I talk about on this channel? Let me know in the comments below. So it's not always rainbows and butterflies, it's compromise uh, with the freestyle board and the big board. So with the freestyle board, the trucks are really tight when you first get it. You can loosen them, but they don't really turn that good. Indy makes some, Ace makes some, but they don't turn as good as the normal Ace trucks or the normal Indy trucks. The freestyle wheels you get with a freestyle board are huge. They're also really heavy because they stick out more on the side so you can stand primo. I never liked Andy Anderson's wheel, the uh, Nano Cubics. I don't really like freestyle wheels. Their contact patch is way too thick. Also, freestyle boards are usually really tiny. They're usually like 7.4, 7.5, but you can get them as big as eight. Recently, Waltz made a 875 version of their freestyle board, which I've thought about making a video on. It's got a really short wheelbase under 14 inches, but that could end up being a really fun board. Same thing with old school boards or bigger boards. There's compromises. They're heavy, they're hard to flip, they're expensive. Both freestyle boards and old school boards are extremely expensive for no reason. It's like $79.99 for a deck. I mean, you could go on skateshred.com and get one of those old school blanks for $30. I've got that link in the description below if you want to check them out. If you haven't checked them out already, they make some really good boards. You can also get a Moose old school deck. It doesn't have to have... Like, I guess you're just paying for a name brand when you're buying a board from Madness or, you know, PAL or Welcome or some old school shaped board. You're paying for like a graphic. You're paying an artist. Which, if you have the extra money, pay an artist. They're starving. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you like this kind of content, scroll through my channel, check out my other videos, and hit that subscribe button because i got a lot more videos to come. Thanks for watching.